Oh wait, this isn't a photo? <laughs> Hi there, my name is Omar Gonzalez and I'm a photographer. So I'm constantly always thinking about still images first. But for this trip, my goal was, what if I didn't think about photography first? What if I thought about videography first? How would that go? Wait a minute, it rains in Costa Rica? Pretty cool, eh? So today I thought it'd be fun to talk to the photographers that maybe are starting to dip their toes into video. I'll talk about, I'm not an expert, but I'll talk about what I learned, what worked, what didn't work, and hopefully we get some great videos together. Make this a video-centric YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay, the first thing I recommend is just be aware that your photographs are going to move. <laughs> so you should really do a little bit of research to see what that looks like. Lion-tailed macaques. <laughs> I actually did watch Planet Earth, Nature, a lot of these shows just to see what the compositions were that I wanted. And I'm not sure if I captured that in my videography, but I definitely was inspired by these shows. Now, although on this trip I've become a renowned videographer, I didn't want to give up on photography. So I recommend having a camera that has a quick switch. This allowed me to be able to grab some photographs and videos together. As long as the bird stayed on a perch long enough, I was able to do video first because that's what this trip was about and then grab some quick shots all by the flick of a switch. You also want a camera that can save your settings separately can save your photo settings, and then when you switch to video, will save your, your video settings, especially shutter speed. For photos, high shutter speed to capture the bird or wildlife action. And for video, you want slower shutter speeds uh, just because that's the video rule. Oh, we're still not in the photo. <laughs> You're gonna need a lightweight lens or a lightweight system. I got lucky because Nikon actually lent me the 400 millimeter 4.5 lens, which gave beautiful buttery backgrounds and also was so lightweight on the Nikon Z8, which was great. <laughs> Stop it. Now, one thing I learned about the lens is it's probably better to have something like a 100 to 400, just to have a little versatility in your videos. By the way, I specifically use the Nikon Z8, but I wanted to make this video more general for people. Uh, but if you want me to make a Z8 settings video, I'll be more than happy to do that for a fee. There I am. Whoa, no snakes. I would say that Ibis is a definite 100% must image Oh, no, in-body image stabilization. You don't want to have a tripod. You actually don't want a video with a tripod. You want to handhold everything so you could just have more maneuverability. So just double check how much stabilization your camera has, five stops, six stops. And also, is there an option for electronic stabilization? This gives you kind of like a tripod look and it does usually crop in a little bit, but you want that if you're shooting wildlife. So stabilization, key, key, key. Okay, the next tip isn't really a super necessity, but boy, did it make my life easy. The Nikon Z8 shoots 4K 120 frames a second, which allows you to really slow down your footage in case the bird is on the perch for like 1.2 seconds, which most of them are. I think you can get away with 4K 60 
or if you're old school, 1080p 120. Now you don't want to shoot everything in 4K 120 because 120 really you just want to slow it down. You do want um, a camera that can kind of give you a mode to switch between easily 120 frames a second and regular frames a second. For me it was 24 frames a second was regular. That way you can get the actual motion of the birds, which is really nice to get. Instead of having everything be, you know, slowed down 120 frames a second. And putting 120 frames a second in a normal timeline is not advisable because it'll look kind of jerky, which will make you jerky. Okay, unless you're a pro colorist, don't even try it. I've seen videos on people color grading. They actually ruin the footage. So figure out what your in-camera video looks like. Figure out your white balances and stick to that. Let the camera do the work. It's going to make your life so much easier if you have a camera that you understand the colors of. So no color grading. It's not allowed. Okay, the next one is re tour bus coming back. Thanks for the dust. Ooh. Oh, hello, editing Omar here. I forgot to mention how important crop mode is on your camera when you're shooting video. I was able to make my lens either a 600 or even a 900 at times by using the crop modes on the Nikon Z8. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the... You hear that? I do. Music. Music is so important in the video and I actually recommend if you're gonna edit, because edit was my next one, that editing is important, but I actually put music before editing. Figure out what mood you want your wildlife footage or any footage to convey. And a lot of times I don't know what I want. I just kind of listen to a lot of music. So I actually like to find something that strikes a little nerve and then work the footage around the music. See if you can spot the difference in these two clips. Subtle, right? Lastly, put it all together and enjoy. In the end, just seeing your photography move is amazing. It's like Harry Potter-ish. <laughs> all right, I'll see you guys next time. You know that I got it, no need to look all in a bag. Stunning like this, cause I work so hard, I'm the best, I only speak facts.